Chapter 1. Pain. Whispering voices. Pain. 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 Need be new pain. What are they sticking in me? Sleep. Pain. Whispering voices. As you know, Nurse Eastman, the government spooks controlling this hospital will not permit me to give this patient the care I think he needs. Yes, Doctor. The voice was breathy. Sweet, so sweet and sexy. We will therefore just monitor his sign. Zzz. Serious trauma like this patient suffered requires extra care, but the rich patsies controlling the hospital will make certain I cannot try any of my new treatments on him. Yes, Doctor. That voice was so sexy. Bruce didn't care about treatments. He cared about pain. And he cared about that voice. Because when he heard the voice, the pain went away. Just for a few seconds, like... Report to me if there is any change, the man's voice said. Yes, Dr. Nance, said the sexy voice. A door closed and Bruce heard breathing and smelled the enticing smell of shampoo and perfume. It was Chanel number no. five. He opened his eyes. All he saw was the roundest, firmest pair of tittles he'd ever seen in his life, all enclosed in a crisp white nurse's uniform. I'm in heaven, he said. No, he tried to say, but his voice wouldn't work. His mouth was dry, and there was some terrible tube thing in his nose. Hey, what's that thing in his dick? It hurts! The tits bounced like Aunt Alice's molded jello back at home, and then moved away. Oh, she was straightening the covers on the bed. Bed. Bruce realized he laid in a bed, his left arm being strapped down with something sticking an upper tube on the top of his hand. Bruce looked up. The tits belonged to a beautiful face carved out of ice and whipped cream with a pair of glowing emerald eyes. Around that perfect face was brown hair like one of those supermodels all puffed up. Oh, you're awake, Mr. Lucent, said the sexy nurse. Bruce worked his lips but couldn't speak. Well, Mr. Lucent, the sexy voice went on. You are probably wondering what you are doing here, honey child. He realized the voice had the accent of a sexy southern peach. You were in an auto accident, Mr. Lucent. But don't worry. You'll be just fine. This here is the finest hospital in Atlanta. And you are in the care of the finest doctor. Dr. Arthur Eastman. Bruce tried to speak, but just moaned. Now, is there anything I can get you? Nurse Eastman asked, moving around to the other sides of the bed and fluffing the pillow. Bruce wanted to feel those titties! That was what he wanted! Now that he could do much else, he realized everything hurt. Right down to that thing, whatever it was, in his dick. Ah! He said. Nurse Eastman's eyes lit up like Christmas tree lights. Now you're talking. Oh! She gave a girlish giggle. Tee-hee. You are recovering just fine. I have to go tell Dr. Eastman right away. Wait, he grated. She paused, giggling again. A frightened giggle now. A childish giggle. As though a little girl on Halloween going door to door, instead of seeing a paper Mackay, witch or goblin, suddenly was grabbed by the real thing. I don't remember, Bruce croaked. I don't remember. Oh no, I can't remember. No, she said, shaking her head vehemently. You don't remember a thing. Now you just rest. She went to the door, her hips swaying like palm trees in a Hawaiian hurricane. Bruce lied there in the bed, trying to recover his memory. All he could remember was the screeching of tires, like a steam engine gone crazy. And then there was just all that pain. Hell. Hell on wheels. That's what it was. Yes, yes. Hell. On wheels. Caught in the wheels of progress. While outside the door, Nurse Eastman leaned against the wall, her breasts rising and falling with passion. 
as she tried to control her gasps. Oh no, she thought. How could it be? Out of all the hospitals in Georgia, they would bring him here. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. She raised shaking fingers and outlined the shape of her lips, moaning softly as she remembered the one day she'd met Bruce Lucent. The single day at the high school prom, she'd gone with her cousin to please their parents. Since his date got sick and he had rented his tux and everything, even though she was in nursing college, enchantment under the sea it was called. You felt sorry for him, so you decided to go with him to the fish under the sea dance. No, no, it was the enchantment under the sea dance. She could remember it as if it was yesterday. Their eye met across the room, locked, held, molding passionately. It was a gaze of molten heat, a supernova of total must. Even though he was only 17 and she was 23. It was only a matter of time before she ditched her cousin, and Bruce ditched his date, and they found themselves in the back of Bruce's Chevy. She moaned, writhing in memory, until a voice splintered, shattered, pierced her memory. Nurse Eastman! It was the head nurse. Her warty nose quivered, her eyes blazed with suspicion. The old bag. She wouldn't know what love truly was. I'm sorry. Margaret Eastman smiled. I just had a cramp. If you are sick, you may be excused from your shift, the head nurse opined. I, I will be fine, but I promised Dr. Nance I would let him know when his patient woke up. Margaret gritted and ran away before the head nurse could stop her, her high heels clattering on the floor like the death knells of doom. Dr. Arthur Nance looked up when the nurse entered the room. Arthur had always been the brightest star at school from a very early age. He was always elected class president in grammar school, middle school, and high school. He was class valedictorian at his graduation. And when a lot of his friends went to mechanic school or junior college to mess around with business, he went straight to the university medical school. But their Arthur ran into something far worse than tough teachers or tough grades. Prejudice! Yes, a prejudice. Not race, but class. All the snobs from the wealthy families laughed at him for his accent. And when he tried to join the most popular fraternities on campus, they hazed him without letting him know until it was too late that he would never join. Arthur got his medical degree, but he became embittered against rich people and politicians and anyone in authority. Wherever he went... He was sure there was some conspiracy against him by those in authority. He was sure of it when he didn't get hired to any private hospitals or to a lucrative practice among the rich doing fat removal or facelifts for 25 grand apiece. No, he could only get a job in this hellhole where every night the ambulances brought in drunks and suicides and crazy homeless and the battered wrecks the EMTs scraped off the freeways. Like this lucent jack. Arthur was sitting there brooding about all these ills when Nurse Eastman came into the doctor room. Is my patient awake? he asked. Yes, she said, and then she wiped her eyes and throatily whispered, Doctor, I have to request that you excuse me from attending to this patient. Request denied, Dr. Nan said curtly. I will not have one of those braided spies who work for the hospital trustees killing my patient. I'll go seize he now. He stormed and stormed out of the room. Margaret leaned against the wall and wept, a sorrowing flood-like of tears. She knew Bruce would emerge from the fog of the painkillers and he would recognize her. What if he told someone about that night at the prom? All her life, Margaret had worked hard, harder than anyone else. Her sisters, all of them far more beautiful than she, had coasted through life like a toboggan down the snow hill of life. But Margaret had a vision at an early age, and she knew she was meant to be a nurse. Her mother had scorned her, her father had laughed at her, so she put herself through nursing school by waiting tables at a low dive at night. Five long years she toiled with never a day off, not even at Christmas just so she could walk out with her head held high and her degree in her hand. Once, 
Just once she had strayed from the path of hard work. Just once she'd let herself relax. Do her cousin Ted a favor. Go as his date to the prom. Well, she'd learned her lesson, she thought. She never thought she'd see Bruce Lucent again, but now, here, the cruelty of the fates laughed at her, just like her family. Bruce Lucent was here, helpless, in her hospital, and it was only a matter of time before he remembered who she was. And what would he do then? She wept even harder. Georgia on my mind. Oh, hey guys. You should be like Break System BSE and support me on Patreon. Uh...